All right, good morning, good morning. All... Did you have a nice Thanksgiving? Yeah. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So um, as we usually do at this point in the service, and all of that, but you get this wonderful little book that's called How to Speak Science of Mind. So we want, um, we want to spread this empowering philosophy, and so what better way than just giving it to everybody that comes. So all of you people that have friends that you've been thinking about bringing, bring them on. They'll get this, then you can borrow it, and it's how fabulous is that. So if you would just raise your hand, please, if you're here for the first time or back after a long time and would like a little packet here. And, and I want to welcome you so warmly, hope, hoping that you will introduce yourselves personally to me. I would love to meet you. So uh, you are here today at uh, the Golden Gate Center for Spiritual Living, where right here our vision is awakening personal transformation and our mission is teaching tools for positive change. That's what we do every single week. This week is a, a special also because it is the first week of Advent. It is, I mean, you barely digested Thanksgiving dinner and it's four Sundays before Christmas. Yep. So we have our Advent wreath on the altar and this beautiful altar that is so in line with our theme that I, uh, of the day that I'm going to get to. This is a Janet Ryan altar and it is so gorgeous. Uh, yes, you can applaud the altar. <laughs> so the way we do Advent is um, a little bit different here. The, the whole idea of at the season of Advent is that we are anticipating something wonderful. We are anticipating, uh, if you have been raised in the Christian tradition, you are anticipating the birth of the baby who became the greatest teacher that ever lived, and that is what we are waiting for. And if you're in a, a, a more inclusive tradition, we um, also honor the elements of Earth. The earth, the plants, the animals, the people, and then the baby. So we kind of include everything. And we have a little song as we light this first candle. Today we are honoring the earth, and there's a couple of my favorite rocks there on the altar. And Bodhi's going to teach it to you, and then we'll have the words next week. It goes like this. We light a candle in the dark. Let's try that. We light a candle in the dark To greet the newborn sun To greet the newborn sun The earth turns upon its axis The earth turns upon its axis A new year is begun a new year is begun. That's how it goes. We light a candle in the dark to greet the newborn sun. The earth turns upon its axis. A new year is begun. A new year is begun. <sighs> so next week we are going to honor the plants. And so if you, if you have a sacred plant that you can put on the altar or near the altar, you're more than welcome to bring it. So our global vision for this whole year is a world that works for everyone. So this week, because our theme is about eternity, I would like to 
expand our vision of the world as big as we possibly can, go bigger than the world today, and to consider that we have a universe that we have a multiverse, that we have an eternity, we have an eternal realm, we have a never-ending source that really does work for everyone. We can imagine that there are planets upon planets and uh, systems beyond systems that all work in harmony just like our solar system does and that from the very, very large to the very, very small everywhere, Something's working that um, supports every single thing in the universe. And so it, it, as we can conceive the biggest, biggest container that we possibly can, all worlds, all time, all dimensions, it pretty much works. I cannot conceive of there being a mistake there. I cannot imagine that we can say, well, it's pretty perfect. But, you know, there's that one planet way over there that, you know, just did not make it in, into the standard of the rest of the universe. I cannot imagine that. So, when we think as big as we can, when we think of eternity, when we think of the eternal, we are automatically drawn to those souls that are not on this planet. The, the souls that are coming in, the souls that have recently left. And so I want to share with you, if you do not know yet, that our precious and beloved Herb Shoynton passed since we were last together. In fact, he passed right after he listened to or watched the streaming video last Sunday. And his dear family is here, his daughter Claudia, his granddaughters, Erica and Chris, are right there in the fourth row, right, I'm looking at them right now. And so what I thought I, I, I wanted to do, because, you know, Herb followed Bill Walker, who recently left this earth plane, to remind us all that they are very alive and well in the eternal realm. They are experiencing, I believe, the perfection of eternity that um, as we think of her, the most recent ancestor, that we honor him, that we send him love and gratitude and believe that he's actually, I, I, I sp spoke to one of his granddaughters today and, and his daughter and said, you know, he's here with us. And, and usually right over there and, yeah, right there, <laughs> right by Joe. There he is, right by Joe in his place. Um, so I thought it would be nice if we called in the ancestors that we remember, beginning with our ancestors from this community. So uh, I'm gonna say a couple, you know, Bob Plath and Doris Jones. Just remember a face that used to be here. And then if you wanna call in any of your own ancestors, please do that. This is a lovely, lovely time when we talk about eternity and think about Herb, that he has a lot of friends right around here. So, Happy Orton, Susan Citron. Joyce Kawasaki, Lynn Buck, Grammy, Aunt Helen, Aunt Nina. Well, it's gotten very cozy in here. Very, very cozy. So we're going to go kind of back and forth between the realms today, if you don't mind. It's a very big and important skill for a spiritual um, artisan to be able to do. So when we think about this realm, so present, so firm, um, that uh, where we co-create and that uh, saying that we have been talking about, a world that works for everyone, let's go back to this planet, this beautiful blue-green marble with all of us interesting people on it and say that we are working on making a world where all races, nationalities, financial statuses, ages, genders, people with differing religions, political persuasions, eating habits, and sexual preferences feel comfortable at home and that they have a reasonable expectation that their needs and the needs of their family and friends can be met. I would feel that if that were my felt sense when I got up and walked through the world, that we do have a world that works for everyone, and so I believe we have some work to do. And so uh, that's uh, uh, one of the lovely uh, parallels when we celebrate this first Sunday of Advent and realize that um, the very rocks that we walk on, the earth that we walk, walk on, 
um, love this tilt and uh, anticipate uh, the birth of the sun uh, as it comes um, at the winter solstice. This realm can feel pretty dense, and actually, we like it. I think we chose to come here, I know, I know, every one of us chose to come here, and one of the reasons is we like the firmness. We like the feeling of gravity. We like the feeling of being held to this planet. And so, when we think about the eternal realm and this pocket in it, and think about all the realms working together for our soul's development, it, it is an amazing thing to contemplate, especially since this month we are now finishing up the theme of wholeness. So I want to just suggest to you that these stacks of reality and the interpenetration of the realms um, remind us that every single realm is whole, complete, and perfect in itself, and that the whole system, the whole system is whole, complete, and perfect. And, and actually, the more we can tell ourselves there's no mistakes anywhere, there's no, uh, there, God did not make any mistakes anywhere, then when we look at something very distinct within one of the realms, we can say, well, maybe there's nothing wrong here. And, and I think that I'm wanting to say that to myself right now. There is really nothing wrong in this realm. And, and so I, I repeat it and repeat it to myself. The quote today, I love this quote. We believe, this is from our own Ernest Holmes um, in, in the essay, What We Believe. And this is it. We believe in the eternality, the immortality, and the continuity of the individual soul forever and ever expanding. So that's Herb, and that's each one of us. We are forever and ever expanding. Some of this that I'm saying today about the eternal realm, when I read something like this from Ernest Holmes, it suggests something to me. And so I might say something that sounds like I absolutely know it. And you know, I absolutely do know it for me. I'm not saying anything today that I have a question about. And some of you may interpret eternity differently, and I want to give you complete freedom to do that. If something I say doesn't feel like it fits for you, use that and say, well, what do I believe? And if something I say opens up a whole new idea for you about you, your soul, your path, well, great, let's go with that. So what I believe is that we come from this eternal home that, and kind of out into the world, like we take a road trip. We take a road trip to Earth. And we have come from the eternal place. We go back to the eternal place, but that eternal place is around us all the time that we are not separate from it, but it feels separate from it because we have chosen to come to this dense realm. But the more we can practice going back and forth between the eternal and the form, then um, the kind of the wiser and more flexible we are as spiritual artisans. So every place we go is for expansion. And the more we kind of feel into those other realms, our trips there in prayer or in meditation are not jerky. They become filled with expansion and continuity. They become graceful, timely, and purposeful. And when it comes the time for us to lay our body down, then we can really do it with grace and ease and really say we live in an eternity that works for me and it works for everyone. So the title of the talk today is Expanding Our Idea of the Eternal. And I just want to suggest to myself and to everybody that whatever we feel about the eternal, there's more of it. And so we can have that experience of expansion even today as we contemplate it. Looking back at this sweet quote once again, we believe in the eternality, the immortality, and the continuity of the individual soul forever and ever expanding. Our soul, Herb's soul, all of the souls that we called in are all immortal. We're immortal. We're immortal right now. We don't wait until we die to be immortal. We are forever on that path of growth and understanding and peace and power and joy, expansion and continuity in a graceful way, just easily, easily expanding. So this eternal realm 
is filled with goodness and support and new ideas and whatever our heart longs for, whatever our heart longs for, there is an answer in the eternal realm. As long as we simply open, keep opening, 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 and believing that in the continuity of this amazing universal eternal realm, there's got to be an answer for everything. So let's, let's look at our trip, okay? Here, here we are. And I believe, I believe that there are beings looking right like that at our planet, the bl beautiful blue, green, white marble held in space and saying, I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. Mom and Dad, please do it tonight. <laughs> That's what I think. I believe it. That's one of those things that I just inserted, you know, that I just kind of laid on you. So here we are. Our trip out to Earth. From the eternal realm, we go on a road trip to Earth. And we have some things that are, um, that go on for all of us. And the first is, the soul has something to give or express. We have something that only we can give to this earthly plane. And we have to give it, or we become very crabby, <laughs> to say the least. And if you don't know what it is that you have to give, ask. Ask. When you go to sleep tonight, when you pray tonight, when you think of the ancestors that are all around you, say, give me a clue. I'm willing to give what I came to give. Give me a clue what it is. Next, the soul has something to learn. I believe that part of what we come to learn in this um, earthly realm is how to get along with all the other souls that incarnated with us. And so we have uh, um, lessons like forgiveness and patience and oneness that we can only learn in a dense realm like this. Because I think those kinds of things are really easy and second nature in the eternal realm, so we come here. And then we have something to enjoy. Our senses were made for enjoyment. And so I want to just give you complete license to taste things and smell things and feel things and listen to beautiful things and look at beautiful things and to feel that gratitude that comes when our senses are excited and, um, and served. So we may not be aware of all these things. And, and what is also true is that we have helpers. We have helpers that help us accomplish these things in sometimes surprising ways. And this is what I really want to share with you today. Well, I want to share all of it with you today. But this, I think, I'm pretty sure this little story is going to have application to everybody. And it might be a little less graceful because I have to hold uh, the microphone and turn the pages. But we'll see. It's called The Little Soul and the Sun, and it is about how we all help each other in our life lessons. So I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it start, you can see there's a little soul in the eternal realm. And it's once upon a time, there was a little soul who said to God, I know who I am. And God said, that's wonderful. Who are you? And the little soul said, I'm the light. And so God said, well, that's right, and you are a very special aspect of the light. And so the little soul contemplated that and said, well, what part of the light am I? And God said, well, what do you want to be? And the little soul said, I know, I want to, I want to be the special part of the light that is uh, about forgiveness. I want, to, I want to be the light of forgiveness. So it goes through a few more pages, and God said, you know, there's really nothing to forgive. There's, not, uh, there's nothing to forgive. And the little soul just really said, well, you know, I've heard of that, and I really want to do that. Then a lo another little soul goes, that just then a friendly soul stepped forward from the crowd. Not to worry, little soul, the friendly soul said, I will help you. You will? The little soul brightened. But what can you do? Why? I can give you something to forgive. <laughs> you can? Certainly, chirped the friendly soul. I can come into the, your next lifetime and do something for you to forgive. 
And so they had this conversation, and, and the little soul said, well, why? Why would, you, why would you do that? Why would you lower your vibration? And the little soul said, simple. I would do it because I love you. So the friendly soul starts getting into the little ch chest there and pulling out the dark clothes and saying to the little soul, um, I will come into your next lifetime and be the bad one this time. I will do something really terrible. And then you can experience yourself as the one to forgive. And so she's starting to put on the darkness. And, um, and then the, the little soul says, uh, what can I do for you? You are such an angel to be willing to do this for me. It's getting very dark now. And um, so the little soul says, in the moment that I strike you and smite you, in the moment that I do the worst to you that you could possibly imagine, in that very moment, and the little soul says, yes, yes, remember who I really am. And the little soul says, oh, I will, I promise. I will always remember you as I see you right here, right now. I will always remember you. Good, says the friendly soul, because you see, I will have been pretending so hard that I will have forgotten myself. And if you do not remember me as I really am, I may not be able to remember for a very long time. And if I forget who I am, you may even forget who you are, and we will both be lost. Then we will need another soul to come along and remind us of who we are. No, we won't, the little soul promised again. I will remember you, and I will thank you for being this gift, the chance to experience myself as who I am. And so, they go off to their trip out to the world. And God says, always remember. God smiled, of course, not concerned one bit. I have sent you nothing but angels. Well, just think about that with the political process. <laughs> Everyone in our lives is either a lover or a teacher. All of those that we would forgive are definitely our teachers. So, we come in as an arrow. We are all arrows. And Authors as diverse as Khalil Gibran and Ernest Holmes say the same thing. This is what Ernest Holmes says in this thing called you. The soul is the one triumphant, indestructible, and unconquerable thing you possess. Shot from the invisible into this experience, it constitutes your great reality. There is no death. It is impossible for you to die. Stop trying to die and, and learn to live. And from Khalil Gibran, you are the bows from which your children as living arrows are sent forth. The archer sees the mark upon the path of the infinite. And he bends you with his might that his arrows may go swift and far. Let your bending in the archer's hand be for gladness, for even as he loves the arrow that flies, he also loves the bow that is stable. And so it is that all of us are the arrows and the bows, all supporting one another in this earthly experience that is a pocket in the middle of eternity. So if you look at this from this big view of the soul, you see that 
Soul work explains a lot. These are two artists giving their gifts. One dancer has one arm, and one dancer has one leg. So in our own life, when things go as we would not choose them if we're just looking for joy, which is pretty nice, this explains frustration, the soul work. Now, I've told the story before that I had a stepfather who should have been a forest ranger. Instead, he managed parking lots. And he waited for those times that he could go fishing or go camping, getting out of the city. He, he went into business because his family wanted him to go into business. And his soul cried for nature all of his life. If you are frustrated in that way, give your soul the gift that it came for. If we don't, we get to experience real pain. This explains pain, that we're not doing what we came to do. It also explains right before we get the lesson. Like the little soul who comes in to learn forgiveness, I bet you that there was not a seamless path to, oh, this is happening, oh, good forgiveness, that's what I need to do. There was some pain involved. But if we could just say about our pain, this is salutary, this is, this is a heads up to the blessing that is coming. Soul work also explains mystery. Now, how many of us have had something come in out of the blue and us be able to say, this is a miracle. This is exactly what I needed and wanted, and I had no idea. That explains it. It is some, somehow our soul constructs the circumstances so that our conscious mind is not prepared for the mystery and miracle that comes forth that it is exactly right. But it's all about what our soul came to do. And finally, it explains desire. What you long to do, whether it's you long to be a parent, you long to do crafts, you long to be an artist, you long to sing, that is God's nudge. Come on, baby, get square onto the path. You've got a toe in it, now get the whole thing going. So as we look at this and then consider this time of year, we have the story of Jesus that um, is irresistible this time of year because the baby, the babies, the, the, we remind ourselves of the time over 2,000 years ago when the soul of the baby who became Jesus, who became the Christ, was looking at that blue-green marble and saying, oh boy, it's my turn. And what happened was that Jesus was called in, called in by a consciousness that demanded what he had to give. And we see this in the book of Isaiah, 400 years before he appeared. The Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. This was written, we think, 400 years before that boy child came into the world to fulfill the promise. So we see Jesus as the great promise, that he was promised, he came, and, and especially if we follow his teachings, he saved people from living and dying without wisdom, compassion, joy, forgiveness, and those life skills, because he was the great example. 
He, was, he lived showing us how to be generous and yet set boundaries, to love softly and yet with a tough love. He taught us how to forgive and to heal, to empower, and to connect with the eternal. And in this teaching, we believe that he is the great example, the great, what? Whoops. Can you make, make it go back for you, Mary? I want to make sure I got all these. So he was called in to be the great promise and the great example. And what is true is that that's our story too. Because he's the great example and because he said greater things than these ye shall do, we are also a promise. And when we do and accomplish what we came in to accomplish, we are a promise fulfilled. When we live the lessons of this earthly realm of forgiveness and truth-telling and oneness, we are a great example. And we are also called in. You did not come in as, a, as an accident in any way. So the soul work that we all have to do involves living the life that we came to live. And what if everything every single thing that we experience is all perfect. That the comings and goings of the people that we love, that's perfect. That when we experience joy and pain, that's perfect. Because of the comings and goings of our loves, we are reminded to stay current with telling people how much we love them and how important they are to us. So that when, when we lay this body down, we have no regrets. Because we're pretty okay with laying the body down if we have given what we came to give, we learned what we came to learn, and we enjoyed what we came to enjoy. I think when we're frustrated, it's when we don't accomplish those things. Not to worry, however, because we live in a universe that works for everybody, and if you don't get it this time, I truly believe there is a do-over. But let us not waste time. Let us do what we came to do. There's no accidents, there's no mistakes, and in concluding this November month, there is only wholeness. This is what I choose to see, and I hope you do too. Blessings on everyone today. Thank you. So our spiritual principles are, we are immortal now and always, and our soul has work to do here. The spiritual practice is relax and let your soul's path reveal itself. Join me now for this inner work. This inner work has a couple of parts to it. The first is about you. If there is something in your heart, in your mind, that has been stimulated today that is yours to do, simply in your heart of hearts, Give some sort of consent. Either say inside, I am willing to do this that I came in to do. It can be as little as apologizing or as huge as creating a, a, an invention that will change the world and anywhere in between. And if you have a smidgen of an idea about what that is, and it's scary, then you can say, I'm willing to be willing. 
That's all God needs. And in a beautiful and graceful way, that path will be revealed. And the second part of the inner work is to bring the face of our dear Herb before our own eyes. Remember seeing him across the room with his dog or speaking to him or giving him a hug and that tall body without a lot of extra flesh on it at all. And wish this magnificent soul Godspeed. Herb has been given his chair at the table of the immortals. And we have an ancestor to call on. We wish him Godspeed and great love. And so it is.